to the Saints at Zion. It's Pastor Jim, and I wanted to uh, come and chat with you about what I've been thinking and doing this past week. Uh, it's been Pentecost when we last gathered uh, last Sunday, and uh, since then, I've been doing a lot of listening, a lot of praying, and a lot of watching on social media about all the violence and brutality that has happened. And it's frightening. It truly is. I mean, for two and a half months, we have been cooped up and we've been focused on COVID-19. And even there, we saw some of the injustices that was happening. Um, I mean, while the African-American population only makes up 13% of our population, according to the CDC, the data, 22% of those and are, are African-American who have contracted it, and 23% of those who have died of it. Right here in Michigan, it's more like 30% and 40% of African-Americans of the, of the total population have died. It's, it's not right. And then, the senseless killings of unarmed African-Americans by police. That according to a Times Magazine article that just came out, said that police kill African Americans at a rate of almost one every other day. And we've heard about those lately. The names, right? Ahmaud Arbery, who was out jogging and was tracked down and shot in cold blood. Breonna Taylor. 26-year-old medical technician shot eight times in her own home with a no-knock entry of a warrant. Sean Reed, a 21-year-old, again, who was shot eight times by police in Indiana. And, of course, our brother George Floyd, who begged for his life as the air was restricted. And he died in police custody, killed, murder charges now filed. Boy, we grieve and we stand in solidarity with all the families and friends of all who have been victims of injustice and racist violence. My heart just hurts. And then, of course, the protests and the looting and the violence that is so scary, which there is no answer for. Protests, yes. Violence and looting, no. But anger is so deep. It truly is. And as I, as I remember what's been kind of rolling around in my head is, is this verse from Micah. You remember the old prophet of Micah that would say in, in 6, 8, the Lord has told us what is right and what God demands, that we do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. This version says, see that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. Boy, we haven't been doing that very well, have we? reminded of uh, a book I was rereading this week by uh, the late Rachel Hull Evans. And she has a chapter called Dirty Laundry. And in it, she says, you know, someone asked me why I'm a Christian. And I said, because Christianity names and addresses sin. It acknowledges the reality that the evil we observe in the world is also present within ourselves. And it tells the truth about the human condition, that we're not okay. We need to confess our sins to each other again and again. I love how she describes it. She says, you know, we Christians don't get to send our lies through the rinse cycle before showing up to church. We come as we are. No hiding, no acting, no fear. We come with our materialism, our pride, our petty grievance against our neighbor, our hypocritical disdain for those judgmental people in the church next door. We come with our fear of death, our desperation to be loved, our troubled marriages, our persistent doubt, our preoccupation with status and image. We come with our addiction to substances, to work, to affirmation, to control, to food. We come with our differences, be they political, theological, racial, or social economic. We come in search of sanctuary. 
a place to shed the mask and exhale. We come to air out our dirty laundry before God and everybody else because we do it together and we don't have to be afraid. We get to say, I confess that I have failed. And, and, and what is it that we have failed? Well, you know, when Jesus came, he talked about the kingdom, right? And every time I sit down with families who are going to baptize a child, I say, we go through a book uh, and we talk about that the reality that Jesus called the kingdom of God. And what we are baptized into is this. What is the kingdom of God? Where God is God alone, that there is forgiveness for all, that all people are precious, that enemies are loved, there's hope for a future, that God's food is for all, that the last are first and the first are last, that all people and all creation have dignity, that sin, death, and the evil are finally defeated, that Jesus is with us always, that there is promise of resurrection, that the Holy Spirit is the teacher and guide, and that all human distinctions have ended because, as in Galatians 3, 28, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Yeah, we haven't done that very well, have we? Is it no wonder that as Jesus is starting to leave this world, he called his disciples together and he prayed and he said, you know, uh, when I am gone, I will send the Spirit who will come and show the people of this world the truth about sin and God's justice and judgment. truth about sin, about God's justice and judgment. I think the Spirit who calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies. Boy, the Spirit's got a lot of work to do to sanctify these days, doesn't it? Sanctify means to make holy, to set us apart, to set us again, doing kingdom work. As Jesus would say in chapter 15, that we need to be about love. I mean, <laughs> Judas had left to betray him, and, and he looked at his disciples and says, you know what, I want you to love one another and that you should be known in this world as my disciples, as those who love. You see, confession isn't going to be just enough. We're going to do it this Sunday. Confession and absolution. And talk about how racism and all the injustices of this world, that we are a part of it. That it's part of who we are as well. That we need to declare that God loves this whole world. That we need to stand in solidarity with the families and friends of those who have been victims of injustice and racist violence and say no, no that we need to be better stewards of God's dream of a kingdom where all are equal. We need to speak out against racism, speak out against social systems and institutions that are entrenched in racism. We have to find our voice. We cannot be silent any longer. Too often we have been in our own little silos, working hard, trying to make life for us. And it's hard work, but too often we aren't looking out for everyone else. We're so busy keeping ourselves so that we can keep going day after day. And it's a struggle. It's not easy. But we can't be silent. The confession just isn't enough and then to move on. We need to speak for change and be advocates for a way forward that we need to have and be allies and come alongside and walk with those who need us. That we need to dream and create a vision of a world where there is equality for all. And I know, I know that we are distracted, that we are disturbed, that we can be traumatized by all of 
the sin, death, and the devil that is in this world. But we have this powerful Spirit of God who prays for us even when we don't know how to pray, so we need to pray. We also need to listen. Listen about what's happening in this world. We need to listen to those who are feeling as though no one else is listening. And finally, we need to do. We need to make justice our first priority, right? I love that. We need to make sure that justice is done, that mercy is our first concern, and that we obey God. And God says, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And so we're gonna spend some time listening. We're gonna spend some time praying. And uh, we're gonna trust that God will show us a solution, that God is leading us into a future I don't know what it all is, but we have to risk to live boldly into the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to pray, we need to listen, and we need to make sure that justice happens. And together, if we are praying and listening, we'll find the ways for God will open that door for us. And God's kingdom will come in new and beautiful ways. We pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May it be more so ever now than ever before. because God's people are being called by that Holy Spirit to step forward, to speak up, and to walk with those who do not feel justice or mercy or the will of God being done. That's what I've been thinking these days, my sisters, my brothers, my siblings in Christ. And my heart is still heavy. But together, together I believe God is calling us forward to be the church, the people of God, in this place and in this time. For God has given us this powerful spirit. And that's more than enough for us to do what God calls us to do. God's blessings, my friends. I look forward to worshiping with you this coming Sunday and Saturday. And uh, I look forward to praying with you, listening with you, and making sure that justice is done.